Welcome to Turnable. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you as a teacher can manage your classrooms. In order to do that, you need to have this tile group here. It's called My Classrooms. And you need specific security roles to do that. So I went to My Organization, so you can see My Organizations. And this is Demo User, so this would be you logged in. You need to have Mentor Ticked. And you can be a mentor of multiple organizations. But in this case, Demo User is only a mentor of Casterbridge Music Development Academy. If Demo User was a mentor for more than just Casterbridge Music Development Academy, Demo User would be able to provide teaching services and academic support to learners in both organizations. But in this case, we're just going to focus on Casterbridge. So if I go back to my dashboard, here you can see choose subject. I have no subject, so uh, this is a music program, so we're going to choose music. So here's music theory, we're going to choose grade one, and we're going to mentor the grade. So in mentoring the grade, this is what it does, is it adds Castlebridge Music Development Academy to this tile for Music Theory Grade 1. Now that's fantastic. Basically what it says is I can go and view my classroom and it's a, interesting to work out how do we decide who are these users. Okay, so at the moment we don't have particularly many users. We've got a handful. But if I go back, how is it possible to choose these members because maybe I don't uh, mentor just some of the users, I mentor them all. So in choosing Castlebridge, here you can see all the users and the ones that are ticked are the ones that I'm mentoring. So this is one option I can go through and I can select precisely which users I wish to mentor. And I can then save those changes and I can mentor those users. There's another way which I can do this, is I can select them by group. So if you set your school up where all the children in a various in a class are in a specific group, and here we're running a music project. Here you could, if I wanted to enroll this group, and this could be grade 10, I would select that group. Now, what it's saying here is nine users will be auto-enrolled. It's telling me that nine of the users in this group have not enrolled in music theory pre-grade one. So by selecting this group, we are automatically, we're gonna force enroll them in this space. So if I go save, what happens if any one of those users who weren't enrolled before log in? They will see they're now enrolled for this learning area. And then finally, the last option is, is, is I can mentor all users in Casterbridge who are enrolled in Music Theory Grade 1. So in this case, I'm not selecting a specific batch of users. I'm selecting everybody. When you have saved um, your changes, you are able to view your classroom. So now when I go to view my classroom, you'll notice that I've got a lot more users that I'm mentoring. Before, I only had a handful of users. And now I have many, 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 many more. And in this space, I can begin to start to understand what is happening. So here I've got some options. I can analyze, I can print out a graph of results, I can look at student reports, I can schedule an event, and this is uh, an event, it could be a maths test, or what in this case would be a music theory pre-grade one test, it could be a music theory pre-grade one contact session where I'm going to teach them something specific. And here I can send them a message and it'll obviously use the messaging of the platform. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the analyze works. So this is to analyze the results of what the learners have done. So in here, in this subject, there are nine steps. So if it was mathematics, there'd probably be 36 because it'd be one per week. And the same for any of the other academic subjects, but this is music theory, so it's not an, a, 30, uh, a full year academic subject. And these are the results of the learners in my, that I'm mentoring and what they've done for each of the assessments. So these are questions in the assessments. And the things that stand out are the fact they do not understand that question. There's the 50% average mark. 
and they do not understand these ones. So here are practical assessment questions. So they're having difficulty with their practical assessments. And here they're having difficulty with two. And these are likely multiple choice questions. So if I click on that question, it's that's the correct answer. And I can show the question here. The letter names for the five lines of the base clef are, and some didn't answer, four people didn't answer. 19 answered G, B, D, F, A, and that's incorrect. And here we had 9 answer F, A, C, E, B, and that's not correct. But E, G, D, E, G, B, D, F is correct. So I can see there's an error here that the, that the learners that I'm mentoring are battling with this question, and I can see specifically where they are battling. So that gives you an idea of the analysis, and I can drill into any of these questions. And I can do the same thing. Here's one which they're getting 85% for. Um, and I can uh, look how many spaces does a base cliff have and there's four, some have said five, some have said seven, one has said seven, and one did not answer, but most have got it right. So we can see quite clearly that there's a higher result there and it's not something that I as a teacher need to really focus on. So I really need to focus on their areas of weakness. So that is what Analyze does. Analyze allows you to analyze a specific um, Week. So if I, instead of letter names this time, I could choose uh, notes, values, and rests. So how is this group done in notes, values, and rests? So you can see notes, values, and rests are doing a lot worse. There's a 50% line. There's a question. Uh, so what does Allegro means? Moderately quick, gradually getting slower, fast. Okay, so several is saying fast, and it actually means moder moder moderately quick tempo. So... This is in a way, this is a tool for teachers to understand what is happening in their classrooms. It's an exceptionally important tool. Right, the other things I can do is I can get a result, the results for the learners in my grade. And, I, and if you're doing these assessments every week, um, you'd obviously only just pick a week. Uh, I'm just going to pick a, I'm going to pick a longer date range. And it's going to go off and collect me the results of every learner that's done the assessment on the platform for that week. And as you can see, I've got many learners. Um, and this is now going online to uh, our, our server to access. It's finished downloading and I can now open it. So it's telling me the test results this organization and that does not seem at all right does it let's try that again letter names okay well we chose it for one year and i can obviously no one has taken the assessment for from the in may it's the second of may and so it's given us um, no results there. So this looks better. So the mentors is demo users, Casterbridge Music Development Academy, and here are all the users that have taken an assessment. So if you want evidence of, of, of learners having done something, that's a simple way of getting evidence of learners having done something. The next thing that we can do, and, I, and I've just clicked that again, I'm going to cancel it, is student reports. So student reports is uh, I can obviously in this space, view a student report. So what precisely does this mean? Okay. When a learner takes an assessment, uh, we capture the results. And I can also, by selecting the learner, capture formal results for them. So I could give them a symbol and I can, I can give them a comment. And I could, in fact, go and capture formal results. And as you know, the platform doesn't do formal testing. It provides assessments to help in a learning process, but these would be your formal assessments. So when I were to go to learner results and I'll pick that same learner, I can go and have a look and see. I think uh, Alan might have done only one or two tests. Yes, he has. So that's the grade average. And Alan has only done two. So letter names he didn't do very well in. And he's done far better in ledger lines and spaces. But as each learner does the assessments, it's going to draw a graph of their results and it's going to draw a graph of the class average. Had I captured Alan's formal results, it would also show Alan's formal results. 
So now we can start to build up a, a report card for a learner, which is in fact a graph of the entire year showing specific areas of high performance and areas of weakness. So there's no point in Alan focusing on ledger lines and spaces. He needs to focus on letter names. So that is what the student reports are. And what I could do is, in fact, um, instead of choosing Alan, uh, let's just delete that. I could show the entire class. And let's see what that does for the entire class. In fact, that's stuck on Alan because it wants to keep coming back to Alan. And I don't want to do Alan. Let's see if I can delete that. And we're going to go view student reports for the entire class. Okay, so this is not just Alan now, it's for the entire class. So now as a teacher, you can start to understand Oswelli's well, not done very well. Uh, Zan's only done one. Uh, this is Zama's only done three. Here's somebody Vuel is doing quite well as they're progressing. Uh, Tokozani has been merely looking at the results. He hasn't really been doing anything. But clearly there's some that are doing better. So here we've got strengths over there and there's a weakness at key signatures and scales, technical names and the first two spaces. So you can begin to understand what we can do from a teaching perspective for users in a class. So that is student reports. And then the last two functions that we got here is schedule event, which is to add a calendar event. So I could, I could create a, an event which will add to everyone's calendar and I could message the classroom, which I don't want to do because there are many users. And, um, but what you can do as a teacher, you can message the, the students in your classroom. So, and uh, the other thing is, what well, I did not mention here, at this level where you pick the learner, you can actually message an individual learner. So you don't have to message the entire classroom, and they don't have to be your friends. Because you're teaching them, you can message them directly. So that gives you an idea of what you can do from, uh, from the, the, my classroom. Okay, so that's what happens when you... So I miss... I, when you start to set up my classroom. The other thing that you'll notice with regard to my classroom, I'm now a teacher for music theory for Casterbridge, is telling me as a teacher there are 68 questions to mark. Now I did not have 68 questions to mark until I started to manage this classroom. And these are all practical assessments associated with music theory. So these are all learners who've taken music theory assessments and some of them are a bit out of date. But here, Jennifer's has taken one, and what I can now do is I can, I've got a rubric to, uh, to mark it. What we do is we print out a book, and the students complete the book, and we then mark this week within a book. It's a, it's a handwritten book. So here, the marking guide is just how many questions are correct, but this marking guide can, is a rubric for essays, it's a rubric for science, practice, and they're all different depending on the assessment that um, you are marking. So that is the functionality, which is the first part of this. So in terms of being a teacher, adding a classroom, some of the functionality around being able to see what's happening in your classroom, helping you with what you have to teach, and then also the fact that it opens up these questions to mark. Because now that I'm teaching students in this space, some of them have taken the practical assessments and I need to go and mark those. So I hope, I hope that has been of use to you, it's been a lot to absorb in a very short video and it gives you some idea of what to enable is capable of.